Ladies and gentlemen, I believe I've realized what the speaker system issues have been. I'm using a cord headset, and the, the headset that plugs into the USB seems to be the way this um, stupid computer wants to have me communicate with you all. However, this corded headset that I bought by mistake, thought it was Bluetooth, um, this corded headset is a piece of crap. Okay, it really is. It's too limiting. I do too much moving around. I got ADD and ADHD. My mama told me I got to keep moving. Keep on moving. Don't stop till the hair of time. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, had one of those flashback moments. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on the serious side, we need to talk about something kind of quickly. If you have a mortgage, if you have a student loan, if you have an auto loan, and we're going to talk about AMCF and AmeriLegion right after this. But if you have a mortgage, student loan, or auto loan, pay attention. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to take a look at Federal Circular Number 10 one more again. And what you're going to find is there's a paragraph in there. It's this paragraph. Now, we can't show you all of the stuff that's in this communication because this thing is 13, 14 pages long. So you can't see this information uh, because this information is not to be seen. Matter of fact, even if you tried to get a copy of it, you won't be able to get it because I'm the only person who has access to this. You feel me? All right. We'll, we'll read this part right here. Breach of fiduciary duty of care. We'll refer to the claim that breach of fiduciary loyalty and breach of fiduciary duty of care and loyalty as breach of fiduciary duty. So this is what we're we're expressing. Did you say respressing? That's right. What about expressing? No, nope, respressing. But why not X? Because I don't have no X's. Oh, you had a fiduciary obligation of fiduciary duty under the power of attorney in fact clause of the contract between the parties signed at closing and witnessed by several parties and bystanders to the agreement to the proceeds realized by the bank upon selling or disposing of collateral to the extent actually received in cash by the bank or another federal reserve will be applied towards the satisfaction of the obligation the bank shall apply such proceeds First, to any fees and blah, 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 blah. They have a power of attorney, in fact, duty, ladies and gentlemen. They have a fiduciary relationship to apply fees to the account. Now, although this is talking about upon the sale or the receipt of any monies, see, to the extent actually received in cash, they disposed of the collateral at closing. Go ahead, collateral security. Ta-da! So, with that being said, go ahead and look at that attorney-client relationship, and I'm going to tell you how that applies because we're going to, I'm giving you this for free. Ladies and gentlemen, because there is an attorney-client relationship between the bank and the borrower, because the borrower gives them power of attorney, that relationship by the borrower giving away power of attorney and if you look at Federal Circular Number 10 and all of the power of attorneys, they have power of attorney to facilitate the discharging of the obligation. If that is their job, then the borrower doesn't have any obligation because the borrower has given that obligation to the fiduciary. You don't have to do a fiduciary form. It's already done. It's in the contract. That fiduciary relationship has a duty and obligation. If they fail to adhere to or apply that duty of obligation, they lose. There's some more information, but I can't give that to you because that is proprietary. Now, please understand, you won't find anybody else talking about this previous to now, but you will find people talking about it after now. That fiduciary relationship is pivotal for those of you who are going through foreclosure. That fiduciary relationship is pivotal. Remember, they were supposed to apply. They were supposed to take care of this and that. We've already put together the arguments. 19 different documents covering several different things so that we can fully document the record. Remember, I told you I'm a documenter. 
That's what I've been from the day I was told documentation is everything. Now, some of you guys think that you're documenters, but many of you add way too much junk that is unnecessary. Unnecessary. Then you add all that other junk that has nothing to do with the subject matter. If you can only stick to the subject matter and nothing else, hey, everything will be okay. All right, now let's talk about AMCF and AmeriLegion. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Let me answer this call real quick, please. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. That was one of the AmeriLegion individuals calling me uh, regarding a conversation we had at our meeting last night. So I apologize, but I have to take that because when they call, I must answer. Ladies and gentlemen, starting in February, we will be handling individuals who are incarcerated. We'll be handling their arbitration awards, their arbitration agreements will be done through SAA, but we'll be handling their arbitration awards so as to take care of their tax credit situation. Now, most people are not understanding the tax credit thing. We'll do a follow-up video to explain that to you. But all you need to do is establish a debt, and you simply follow the scriptural principle of forgiving the debt. Once you forgive the debt, then you do your cancellation of debt through the 1099A, 1099C process, and the credits are there, they're automatic until they change the rules. They are going to change them, but they haven't changed them yet, so I keep telling people the grandfathering in is where you want to be. For those people who are incarcerated, they have tax credits, any fines, any penalties, any anything like that gets absorbed that way. Technically, a person who's incarcerated could actually go into business by getting credits and then offsetting the child support payments of the people who are inside facilities with them. We'll explain this as the months go on, but that's what the organization is going to start doing, is helping those who are incarcerated with their fines, with their restitutions, and so forth. Now, this works in three ways. We know that restitution does not go to the family, does not go to the victims, or anything like that. We know this. But it helps to discharge that debt, because you guys don't know there are people who have millions of dollars worth of restitution that they must pay and have no way of paying it and thus remain in jail because they use that as one of the criterias for not releasing the person because they have an outstanding debt. It's an amazing world we live in. Ladies and gentlemen, also those who have child support issues, we will be helping to facilitate facilitate the credit as long as you're in the rears with child support the tax credits is supposed to under the treasury offset program just go ahead and look at it it's called the treasury top program the treasury offset program go ahead and look at how it works if you owe anything when you file your taxes it is absorbed through the credits so we're going to be assisting those who have child support issues at AMCF and Amera Legion, but it will be done through Amera Legion. So, if you are interested in those programs, download your contracts, get your contracts taken care of. Now, during that period, and I want you to understand, for incarcerated individuals, we are reducing the fees for the arbitration for them. Why? Because they're incarcerated. They can't afford it. And we don't want you coming out of your pocket for them. What I mean is we understand that there is a difficulty in accumulating the monies. Why? Because these individuals are incarcerated. They cannot go out there and earn an actual living. And you cannot afford to take care of them and then take care of paying the full fees. So we're going to give you a discount. The normal fee is $400. We're going to reduce that to just $115. Why $115? Because the mailing is the $15 and the $100 is the arbitrator for handling just the disposition. So to get started, download the incarceration contract. A person who's incarcerated can also use the credit coupon contract it's called the government coupon the government remittance coupon contract you'll see it in there i believe it's the fourth contract on the website i'm not going there right now this is just a short video to let you guys know what's going on now for those of you who really don't understand amcf and what they're doing 
you should go back and listen to the beginning of this video as to how there is a fiduciary relationship. If there is a fiduciary relationship, then that means that they had a duty and obligation. The borrower doesn't have the obligation. The borrower has done their job. They've given a responsibility to the fiduciary. That fiduciary has the responsibility of taking care of that. And guess what? They also have the responsibility of communicating back to you when you ask them a question. They cannot tell you it doesn't have any legal validity. So, if you are interested in the services, go to amcf.estate. If you're interested in AmeriLegion, go to AmeriLegion. I think it's AmeriLegion. Is it AmeriLegion.com? I think it is AmeriLegion.com. So many different names. Hold on. Let me. It is AmeriLegion.com. The reason being is because there are no other AmeriLegions. Uh oh. Can't show you this one. So I got to move it over. There we go. Whew, sorry. I make mistakes when I do things like that. So um, some information I can't show y'all because it'll uh, end up canceling the account. A R A L E G I O N dot com. Now that's AmeriLegion, and then while well, AmeriLegion pulls up because it's locked, um, the security thing. Uh, come on, AmeriLegion. It wants to take its time. I'm sorry about that. That's that uh, neutrality, internet neutrality junk. Okay, so that's AmeriLegion, and then those of you who need to get a copy of the contract for incarceration or the, what is it called, um, government coupon. Okay, this is the redemption coupon contract. That's that one. Then we have the incarceration contract. Now look, many of you don't know how to create credits, so why don't you start with the infinite state agreement? Sorry, we can't reduce the fees for everyone. We can only do it for the ones who are incarcerated because they have that right for a reduction. But the rest of you, please understand, the government is holding assets of you all in trust. Because they're doing that and they're not allowing you access to your securities, then go ahead and write it up. Be reasonable in the amount. Because you can do a partial debt on the contract you can do a partial debt on the contract and say that that partial debt is wholly worthless and still comply with the law remember by doing it as a corporation and the estate is a corporation it's called a bankruptcy estate go ahead and do your research on the bankruptcy estate let me see if i can find that uh oh i can't do it hold on let's make sure Ooh, i almost made a mistake um, give me a second. Let's see if I can find that for y'alls real quick. Not there. Not there. Nope. That, I think I may not be able to, I may not be able to find it because I may have gone through, yeah, I may have gone through too many pages. So let's see if I can find it by going backwards. But, no, there's no reason to do all that. That That's too much. Ladies and gentlemen, understand this. To create your credits under the infinite state contract, all you have to do is document the debt. You figure out what you were due for the last 20 years. You figure out what you were due for the last five years. You figure out what you were due per year. Keep it reasonable. I would do it so that I can do it again. I wouldn't do it for the full amount. I'll do it for a reasonable amount right now, and then the next time I'll do it for another reasonable amount. Remember, the arbitrator will only issue an award that is reasonable. Has nothing to do with the court. We'll say it again. Has nothing to do with the court because you're going to forgive the debt because we know their government hasn't paid yet and they're never going to pay. So, with that being the case, as the Turner Revenue Code says, you don't have to go to court. Just forgive the debt. Just that simple will help to balance the budget respecting our individual accounts. All right, ladies and gentlemen, in under 15 minutes, we bring this information to you. You're going to have to listen to this, and then you're going to have to realize what's being said. Have a good day, everyone.